In five words, describe what you think being intimate with me would be like. <laughs> Why did I feel like that was going to be the <laughs> first question? I think it would be, I think it would be a s sweet, caring, but also kind of fiery, like oh. a little, little, little spicy, um, but then also really comfortable. Mm -hmm. I would say loud. <laughs> and I don't mean loud like the amplification of our mm -hmm. voices. I mean like loud and big mm -hmm. and like full, um, bold, and um, new. I think that was five. Your turn. What's something you genuinely think I should know about you? Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, okay, I guess we'll get a little bit like intense and deep. Um, Only if you want to. Oh no, it's fine. I, so if you were to search my name on the internet, the first thing that would come up is some of the work that I've done. Um, and it all has, is rooted back to my source of trauma, which is the fact that when I was a young teen, I was like 14 or 15 years old, someone posted nude pictures of me on the internet without my consent. And those nude pictures stayed up on the internet for about five, six years with, without my ability to get them taken down. Um, and I ended up um, really using that as a springboard for my own work as you know, someone fighting injustice. Mm -hmm. And I ended up starting an organization that um, combats revenge porn or cyber sexual assault through holding protest marches in different cities nationwide and worldwide. Um, so it's something that is deeply, a deeply rooted part of who I am because it happened to me so long ago and it really established how I built myself as a person. And I'm still, you know, traumatized about a lot of things because of what happened to me. But I think that that's, uh, it's just something important that you need to know about me <laughs> before anything, because it, it kind of explains why I do what I do, why mm -hmm. I say what I say and how I feel what I feel. Um, I think that's why I wanted to be here today because I wanted to practice vulnerability in a way that was safe and comfortable mm -hmm. and not use the internet as a weapon as it's been used against me so many times. I love that. Well, thank you for being here. Oh, oh I'm, I'm glad you're here with me and we're um, <laughs> me too. being vulnerable together. What, what, I'll ask the question to you again. What is the thing you think I should know about you? Hmm. Um, I can be complicated sometimes. I have my <laughs> moments. Um, I, well, okay, one thing definitely, I guess it's pretty important is um, my family's very interesting. They're kind of crazy. They're not the most supportive people in the world, but I still love them to mm -hmm. death, even though they drive me absolutely <laughs> nuts, like up a wall. I come from this culture that's pretty homophobic and kind of like, racist and they're very more so saying like you got to be with the person who also comes from the same same culture and growing up here in New York and being really open and exposed to different types of people has made me who I am and made me want to be open and like expose myself to different types of people so it's I, I would say that's an important thing that I was just like I don't know if I want to fill it on the second <laughs> question or the eighth but hey well, it seems like you're really willing to joke about it, but I can yeah. imagine that it still eats away at you to some degree. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's kind of like my way of trying to like tell them, but then not necessarily be serious about it. And then when I do want to have serious conversations, they're like, are you, are you joking around? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm being serious. <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. But I always like tend to joke around with them. And then it's, cause I just can't have serious conversations with them. It's really hard for me to have a serious conversation with them. Do you think it's like a coping mechanism to some degree? Probably. probably. Sorry, not no, to psychoanalyze no, you, but, but I, I think. I try and <laughs> psychoanalyze myself. I'm like, why am I doing what I'm doing? It's because yeah. of my family. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Oh, sorry. It's OK. Is it my turn? I was going to ask what your name is. Please. I wanted oh. to ask in the beginning, <laughs> and I totally forgot. And then you said, if you look up my name, I was like, I don't know what oh, your yeah. name is. Oh, yeah, my name is Leah. Leah, okay. What's your name? My name is Grisida. Grisida. Yes. That's a very pretty name. Yes, I learned to love my name, so. Yeah, of course, you have to. Because yeah. okay. nobody else will love it for you. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Okay. When was the last time you lied? <clears throat> wow. Um, 
Hmm. Sheesh. So I guess just maybe lying to myself and trying to convince myself that I'm okay and that whatever's going on, that I can deal with it. But um, I think that would be one of the, yeah, one of the biggest things recently. Lying to yourself is like the worst person to it, lie to, I don't know. you think? I, I definitely the worst person to lie to. And I feel like I've done it so often to myself that it's become so natural to do. The worst thing you can probably do is just convince yourself that you're feeling one way when you're feeling a complete other way. Mm -hmm. It's impossible not to lie to yourself sometimes, I feel like, because we are just naturally like mm -hmm. fixers and we want to make sure that things aren't as bad as they may appear. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, we can't come to terms with things that might, we might need to fix. Mm -hmm. So it's challenging. <laughs> Love that for us. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just good old lying to yourself. Good old lying to yourself. Every now and then. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> yep. Normal stuff. Yep. We all do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What, <laughs> what do you think are my soft spots? Meaning, if you had to seduce me, how, how would you? Oh, great. <laughs> um, I am guessing that they mean physicality, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to take it that way. Um, I feel like one of your soft spots is clearly praise and affirmations. Mm -hmm. And so telling you that you're doing well and that you're comfortable and that you're safe is probably something that means a lot to you. Not that that would necessarily seduce you, but it would probably make you feel better. And I feel like you have to feel comfortable in order to be intimate with someone um maybe you know hold your hand mm -hmm. watch some poetry videos <laughs> so, so we were both feeling the vibe <laughs> um, don't know what that means <laughs> but just do intimate things like watch movies relax mm -hmm. eat some good food mm -hmm. um until we're both just really <coughs> comfortable and then i feel like other stuff comes along with that I like that you said comfortable because when I think of like being intimate my past experiences of being with being intimate with other people I've kind of like forced myself to be like okay you're comfortable this is cool like you're and I feel like we've probably all been in that place mm -hmm. every so often and um I, yeah, I do like those things. I think that's really nice. You should see my bag, and I have a button poetry sticker on my phone. <gasps> I have a button poetry shirt. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't have a shirt. I have a tote bag, <laughs> really? and I have a bunch of other books at home, too, from there. It's my dream so. to be on button poetry. Oh, my <laughs> God. I love button okay. poetry. Okay, I freaking love button poetry <laughs> so much. We could watch a shit ton of button yes, poetry Yes, exactly, videos. exactly. But that, Just like, like yeah. is what it goes back to. Like, I feel like it's about lying to yourself, yeah. lying and saying that you're comfortable when you're really yep. not. And it's about that honesty. So, like, yeah. obviously, like, if I was ever going to seduce you or anyone, it would seduce have to be, like... Button, bring your button poetry <laughs> here. <laughs> completely consensual in that, like, mm -hmm. we're both completely aware that we're both okay in that moment to do whatever happens. Because otherwise, it's, like, it's one-sided. Yeah. What would your ex <clears throat> warn me about being in a relationship with you? <sighs> like or your last fling? Yeah, the last fling. Um, maybe... Maybe I'm a little overwhelming mm -hmm. in the sense that, like, if you kind of need your space, I will try and give you the space, but then I'm kind of like, are you okay? <laughs> I, like, I worry. I'm like, are you okay? How are you feeling? I can be a little bit overwhelming and maybe a little bit too much. Mm. And the reason why that happens with me is kind of like, I like the person. I like them, and I'm just like, I get excited, and I get, like, happy, and then... It just, it becomes a lot for them and they're like, whoa, you need to relax. So it, it kind of, I guess, maybe annoys them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess I can be annoying sometimes and a little bit overwhelming. I don't think you could ever be too much, like any yeah. person. I don't think, I think no one could ever be too much of who they are. And mm -hmm. if someone tells you that you're being too much or implies that you're being too much, then they're not the right person for you because yeah. the person who's right for you would never think that. Yeah. What you have to give is more than they can take. And if it is, then it's not the right person. Yeah. Um, it's but definitely something I'm learning about myself, yeah. too, and trying to also tell myself, like, if they're, meant, if they're meant for you, then the way that you act and the way that you are being, which is myself, just, this is me. Yeah. 
take me as I am. Yeah. Um, shouldn't be a problem for anybody. Right. So, and it's hard to really like convince yourself of that. Because once again, we're our biggest critics and we're right. always like, no, but you could have done this better and you right. could have done that better and you could have done a little bit less of that and a little bit of more of this. Right. So it's it's hard to like get into that mind space, but um, definitely working on it. And as far as those last flings go, um, I've established that I'm like, it's not me. It was the other person. Of course. I was like, I was being me. I was giving you love. Exactly. You didn't get, you, I didn't get none of that back. So you know what? Screw you. You didn't want what I was serving, exactly. but someone will. Somebody and that's will. fine. Exactly. Maybe they were a vegetarian and you were serving a steak. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, what was the question? What would your ex warn yes. you about me? Mm -hmm. Should I answer the question? Yes, if you want. Okay, yeah. No worries. I'll answer all the questions. Um, I think similar to the last question, my ex would probably warn you that I have mental health issues. I don't think anyone should ever take a mental health issue as mm -hmm. something to warn someone about, but I think my ex would have done that. My ex told me when we were breaking up that I was too broken to be fixed. And I think that they felt like it was their responsibility to fix me. And that responsibility that they felt was mm -hmm. so burdensome to them that they couldn't function in the relationship anymore. So I acknowledge to be transparent that I have issues that mm -hmm. I am constantly working on and I am not a full, fully fleshed out person yet. Um, but it, I'm trying so hard every day to do what I have to do. It's like every day is a challenge for me. Mm. And I also want to prove them wrong, that I'm not too broken to be fixed. I'm not broken in any way. Mm. I am f like whole as I am, yep. um, despite the cracks in the surface. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, what a terrible thing to say to someone, you know? Um, I agree. I, <laughs> that, I was like, ouch. That, ouch, that yeah, hurts. that hurt. Um, no, that's, I'm sorry that she said that to you and made you feel that way. And uh, even though we just met, I am proud of you. Thank you. For advocating for yourself and for knowing that you are, you're doing great right now and you're doing the best that you can and you'll only get better from there. So yeah, proud of you for that. Thank even you. though I just met you, but I feel like people need to hear it more often. Like I, I know I need to hear it. So I'm yeah. kind of like, I'm gonna tell people I'm proud of them. If I feel like it's something that they need to be proud of, I'm gonna say it because mm -hmm. you you should be proud of it. It's it's uh, super important. Yeah. So. Well, I love affirmations, yes. as do you. We do. So, so I'm I'm also proud of you for recognizing that no matter what you give, it's not too much for someone. It's their mm -hmm. fault and not yours because that's just completely true. I wouldn't mm -hmm. ever think anything otherwise. Cool. <clears throat> Before leaving this space, what's the last thing you want to remember about me? <laughs> um, definitely, I would remember your smile physically because... That was such a terrible fun. No, <laughs> me too. Um, no. Because it's very memorable. Mm -hmm. It was the first thing I noticed about you and I hope it's the last thing I remember. And then just how open you are and how... I think forgiving you are to yourself. I think that that's something that I'd like to take with me um, and learn from you. That you seem like you're completely aware of what you have to offer and if someone doesn't wanna take that, then that's completely okay with you and I think that that's a really brave. Mm -hmm. So I think your bravery is something that I'd like to remember and your smile. Yes, you're giving such good answers. I'm like. <laughs> They're so like Thanks. nice and wholesome answers, and I feel like I might be like I don't even know what my answers no, are sounding like. No, you're great. Um, thank you. I I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I would say your bravery too. You held you've held marches before you, you've experienced things that have made you the person that you are, and um, you're fucking brave, man. Like that's that's awesome. Just to experience what you've experienced and then go out there and be so open about it and start movements and have marches about it and it's super important so i would say your bravery too thanks you're welcome Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Mimi at The Skin Deep. If you want to be a part of our community, if you want to join our movement, you can subscribe to our newsletter at theskindeep.com slash subscribe. Thank you so much.